In theory, we could all be celebrating. Celebrating 10 years of essential work. Celebrating all we have achieved together. All the harm that has been prevented. All the lives that have been spared. And all the safety protocols now in place. But when the goal is zero harm, celebrations can wait. Especially at this moment in time, after a worldwide pandemic has pushed the number of preventable deaths and injuries even higher, and has pushed healthcare workers to the limit. Yet dampening celebrations is one thing, dampening our resolve is another. Of course it's not a perfect world. A perfect world would not need us. Our work is more vital than ever. We can't do it alone. We never could. It takes all of us, patients, caregivers, and families working together, reaching across borders and disciplines, drawing from each other for the ideas, the innovations, and the energy needed to reach zero preventable deaths by 2030, leaning on each other the way we always have. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mike, for that voiceover on that video. It, it certainly reminds us of the challenges that we have uh, ahead, but also the challenges that we've come through. Um, uh, and that's where my heart and head are, I think, that we're coming through uh, the challenges uh, of the last two and two and a half years in some countries. And now we're, we're at a, a place where we can start to look forward uh, but look forward armed uh, with new knowledge, new knowledge of how to deal with different systems, new knowledge how to deal with each other, uh, uh, how to add resilience to our systems, uh, which are all key, key elements of collaborative partnership working uh, to improve the safety, not of our necessarily just of our patients and their families and their carers, but also of, of ourselves as healthcare workers uh, who have uh, suffered. Uh, as well during the last two and a half years. Reflecting on today's sessions, uh, well, so much to talk about. Um, but I think for me, I think the uh, the work that, that Peter Lackman is doing in terms of developing uh, our, our fellowship programme will stand, uh, stand it in great stead. Uh, and it will also act as a, uh, as a beacon, I think, for others to join us uh, and for those fellows to carry on their journey of, of becoming experts uh, in safety, but um, trans, translating that work into effectiveness at their front line, wherever that, that is. It was also wonderful, absolutely wonderful, to see the recognition uh, given to Yannicka uh, Mellon Olsen, but also to Javier de Villa. Um, these two guys have been working tirelessly in their own countries uh, and also in many settings outside of their own countries to promote uh, the work to improve the safety of our patients um, and also to improve the quality of care uh, in uh, their own settings in their own countries. And so it was, it was fantastic to see that uh, the Patient Safety Movement Foundation was able to offer them uh, some small reward uh, for their huge efforts. Um, so thank you again uh, to them. I was particularly um, engaged, uh, that would be the right word, uh, with uh, Engel Carson's uh, element of looking at how we, in the healthcare workforce, uh, are drivers for innovation uh, for our future. Um, and also Thomas, Tom, Thomas Feltzeltner, in terms of how innovation uh, is often driven through times of crisis and uh, not just as necessarily as a, as a need, uh, but also as a product. Um, and I think they were uh, exciting sessions. Um, it was uh, also, I think, uh, interesting, uh, certainly from a moderating perspective, which I was pleased and, and privileged to be able to do, to be uh, in on sessions five uh, with uh, uh, Neelam, Mike, uh, Lee and Arjun. Um, uh, I thought we then got a sense of reality uh, from each of those, uh, of those key people. Uh, in uh, their leadership roles, um, just during the pandemic, but also the lessons that they brought out for us. And then finally, I think the conversation that took place between Sir Liam Donaldson, Mr. Jeremy Hunt and, and, and uh, Joe Chiani of their own personal reflections of the last 
a couple of decades, but also their challenges for us currently, but also their signs of, 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 uh, of, of hope for the future. Um, but consistently, I think through those three individuals came the real understanding uh, that it's the patient and it's the patient's family uh, often that will always bear the brunt of avoidable harm, much more so uh, uh, than we often uh, recognize. And so I think it was, a, it was a very salutary experience listening to them talk about the real needs for us to understand and support our patients and their families when things have gone wrong. We're moving forward. The Patient Safety Movement Foundation is moving forward. Uh, as I said earlier, our next summit uh, will be real, um, in person. Um, we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, but we also are looking forward to uh, utilizing our evidence-based uh, uh, practices in terms of the apps to, to really look at how we can help support frontline systems uh, to deliver appropriate and improved care. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for your kind attention over the last two days, but I'd also like to thank uh, all of our co-conveners uh, and all of our sponsors, uh, because without their support, both in terms of time and resource, um, and dare I say it, cash, we would not be in a position to be able to support uh, the summit in the same way that uh, we have been. So, so I'd like to thank all of those uh, co-conveners and sponsors, and all those, all of those who played a part in the panels um, and the moderators of those panels. But I think most of all, I want to think about and and thank the patients who and the family members who have contributed to much of the video content uh, of our work. Um, because it's without their support for us, then it would be increasingly difficult to be able to put forward the arguments that are so needed to reduce uh, avoidable harm to zero across all our healthcare systems and settings. And I think it's that for me is one of the take home messages that it's this is not a challenge only for hospitals, this is a challenge for every setting uh, where healthcare is delivered, most importantly, um, uh, at the home as well. So uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed listening. I hope you have, it has challenged you. I hope you've taken away some messages uh, that you can translate into action uh, in your own work setting, but also in the way you think about how you can improve, not just the care of your patients, but also uh, the relationships and collaborative working uh, with all our fellow healthcare workers. We often talk about those three elements of empathy, respect, and trust uh, in ourselves and in each other. And I think it's with those elements uh, that we need to move ourselves forward and keep those close to our heart. And as Peter said in his keynote earlier, uh, love is a key an everlasting uh, ethical value as well as a, a real emotional term for us to keep in all the work that we do uh, to support ourselves, our patients, our families and our healthcare systems. So thank you all very much for listening. I hope you have a great time uh, after this um, uh, summit uh, and go back uh, to work with renewed energy and support uh, for change and improvement. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you next year at the, our uh, appropriate event. Thank you.